Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Our destination for today's show is the always very fun shop here in Tulsa. It's called Ida Red. I love this place. It's a self-described eclectic and rockin' place that sells everything oaky and then some. Open here on Peoria Avenue for about 10 years or so, this has been voted Tulsa's greatest gift shop. One look around will show you immediately why. We'll give you a bit of a tour as we go through the show. But right now in our first story, we're gonna take you to a hot spot in Southern Oklahoma, a hotel rebuilt where it stood for decades. It's now an incredible getaway for folks from all over. Lucen Anderson takes us to Sulphur and the Artesian Hotel. Sulphur, Oklahoma, just your typical small town, but did you know 1.8 million vehicles go through that intersection right there every year? Tourism hotspot in Southern Oklahoma, partly because of the Chickasaw Nation and the Artesian Hotel, Casino and Spa. You're not gonna believe what we found going on inside. From the amazing display of flowers and the baby grand piano to the open walk, through the tall pillars to the front desk, you get a feeling you're going back in time when you walk into the Artesian Hotel in Sulphur, Oklahoma. We're coming up on our, our third anniversary. That'll be August the 2nd. Truly excited about that. Nick Starnes is the Artesian Area General Manager. He's seen this grow into a true destination for people from across the country. Uh, in excess of 80% occupancy in the three years that we've been open. And people are amazed by that. They're even more amazed when you say, yes, conservatively, we've had over 122,000 people come through our doors. Of course, the beautiful rooms, just one of the draws. But the Solarenity Spa may be one of the best kept secrets around, at least until now. We've had people come in from Scotland. Um, we have met people from England. Um, we've met people from all over the United States. Rhonda Mordecai started Serenity Spa in Gainesville, Texas several years ago as a unique approach to holistic treatments. But her life changed the day she got a call from the Chickasaw Nation. They asked us if we would come to the Artesian to open up a spa. Now I'm gonna cry. So um, it's been an amazing journey. That, Seren uh, that Serenity's had this opportunity to be able to come here into this area. And bring with her a unique brand of skincare products, makeup, facials. Our facials are from just a relaxing, luxury European facial to the medical grade facials. And so we have our own signature facial as well. It's called Serenity Signature Facial. We have a private label a skincare line from a world-renowned cosmeceutical company. Uh, that facial actually incorporates cold laser therapy, which heals on a cellular level. Of course, she says the number one seller is the massage. So, Lisanne, here at Serenity Spa at the Artesian Hotel, we have four treatment rooms. Each room um, has a retractable bed. The beds are all electric, they're heated. Our sound is retractable and so is our lighting. Swedish massage is also really good for the lymphatic system. We'll always instruct you to drink a lot of water after you've had a massage to el eliminate all the toxins. And once you're on that table, trust me, you won't want to get up. One of the coolest things about the Artesian Serenity Spa here, you can buy a monthly membership. You could use this every single day. Honey, sign me up. So whether you're here for a little relaxation, or mixing a little business with pleasure with the family. Love it. It's uh, just beautiful, very clean, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful place to get away, whether you're doing a convention or not. Just a great place to come with the kids and you know, just a, a really neat place. The Artesian Hotel, Casino and Spa in Sulphur, Oklahoma, it has it all. What do you girls want to do here? What do you want to do? Swim. 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 <laughs> Discovering Oklahoma in Sulphur. I'm Lisanne Anderson. If you're looking for great getaways like this one, you need a copy of the 2016 Oklahoma Travel Guide. Inside, you're going to find all sorts of places you want to visit. We'll send a copy right to your mailbox at no charge to you. Just head to our website, travelok.com, and click where it says Request Free Brochures.
Well, you got to admit the history of the Artesian Hotel is certainly impressive. It is, and speaking of history, you know, just north of Oklahoma City is Guthrie where there's history, I think, on every corner. <laughs> exactly. In fact, you can stand on the steps where our great state first got started. History is impulsive, unpredictable, and resilient. Oklahoma's own fascinating history certainly are those and more, and they are all on display right here for you to explore and learn about the opening of Oklahoma to settlement. We discuss in depth the uh, land run of 1889. Um, we put a particular focus on the boomer movement, the, the 10 years preceding the land run of 1889, where the common man was, was trying to get this land opened up for settlement for farmers. There are artifacts reflecting the people and circumstances surrounding Oklahoma's beginning. And one of the biggest artifacts in the museum is this item. A 46-star United States flag that was flown over Independence Hall in Philadelphia on July 4th, 1908. It's one of a kind. It's, it's spectacular. It's probably one of the most important artifacts that we have in this museum. One of the stars on it is embroidered with Oklahoma, July 4th, 1908, and it was put on the flag inside of Betsy Ross's house in Philadelphia before they flew it over Independence Hall. People's determination during the land run are also on display, like this cabin built in 1889. And it was built by a man that made a land run, and one of the things that you had to do to claim your land was to prove it up, and one of the ways you proved up was building a home or you know, digging a well, making a, a permanent residence on that piece of property. And then you, you would have to prove that with the, uh, the land office, that, that you had taken the steps to solidify your claim. This Tallman's Transfer and Bus Company display reflects the early days of transportation. They operated these all around town. One of the funny things on there, and the things that I make people look for, is for them to tell me what the, the phone number is for Tallman's Transfer Company, because it's on the coach. Which is one. Which is one, yeah. So who had the first phone in, in Guthrie? Tallman's Transfer Company. There's the unusual, such as the story of Carrie Nation, a prohibitionist who used a rather unusual method of persuasion. She would go to saloons, give speeches, and then tear the place up with a hatchet. All right, so one of our displays is a hatchet. And it's, it's hers, but we also have a little hatchet pendant that she would make and sell, and this is how she would fund her crusade against, against alcohol. And one of the biggest attractions to the museum is the one involving the outlaw turned mummy, Elmer McCurdy. It's a bizarre yet rather intriguing case of the wandering dead and how the corpse of an outlaw killed in Oklahoma ended up in a California Fun Park spook house and then got returned to Oklahoma and is now buried just north of Guthrie. It, it draws people from all over the country. On, on a weekly basis, we have somebody come here to talk to us about that story. With the exception of the land run of 1889, it's the largest draw to our museum. The Oklahoma Territorial Museum is connected to the Carnegie Library, but the library itself has its own fascinating history. It's on these very steps that in 1905, the last territorial governor was inaugurated, that was Frank Friends. And then later, Oklahoma's first state governor was sworn in right here in 1907. Our museum is the story of America in, in, in a microcosm. It is the final place where the frontier ceases to exist. In 1890, the frontier is gone, all right? The, the U.S. Census Bureau deems the frontier closed because guess what? This land right here was settled. So this is it. This is the last of the expansion of the United States. All right, so yeah, that's, that's why we're important. The Oklahoma Territorial Museum is open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 to 5. Admission is $4 for adults, $3 for senior citizens, and $1 for kids. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. It's New Orleans and downtown Tulsa. The hot spot cooking up Creole in the Sooner State. It's authentic. It's Western. It's part of our heritage. Plus a stop in the stockyards for some sweet treats and great gifts. We've been talking about doing this, and we worked at the church, we cooked at the church, and we cooked barbecue, and we knew how to cook barbecue. 
and a hobby turns into one of the greatest barbecue joints in southwestern Oklahoma. We're going to try it out a little bit later right here on Discover Oklahoma. Great travel tips anytime. Like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Oklahoma's new 2016 Outdoor Guide is full of the state's most spectacular activities and destinations. And when you use our new mobile app, some of the pages spring to life. So find your Oklahoma state of mind. Order your free guide at TravelOK.com today. Welcome back to Ida Red, one of Oklahoma's coolest gift shops. It's in the Brookside District of Tulsa. Great place to find all kinds of oaky stuff. I love that mug. Great oaky wine stopper. And one of the many things I love about the store is you want some Oklahoma music, here you go. Vinyl, Mr. Bob Wills himself, or CDs, whatever you want, they got it here. You bet. And I don't think it's too early to start talking about something to never, eat. Never, never. And about 10 minutes from here is one of the hot spots to eat lunch here in Tulsa. Julie mm -hmm. Chen is going to take us to LaSalle's New Orleans Deli. Ooh, It's New Orleans and downtown Tulsa. Just like the city it's named for, LaSalle's New Orleans Deli is a melting pot of music, culture, and flavors. It is like a mini trip to, to New Orleans. You walk in here and you get kind of swept away for 30 minutes, 20 minutes for your lunch. Chris and Amanda West opened this corner lunch spot on South Boston two years ago. This husband-wife team is from New Orleans. They moved here after Hurricane Katrina. Kind of the inside joke in our family is that I actually I actually opened this place up so Amanda would have to make gumbo every day so I could have gumbo every day. That gumbo and other family recipes are served fresh daily to sell out crowds. We make as much food as possible every day and then by the end of the day it's basically all gone. <laughs> Muffalettas, po'boys and jambalaya are just a few of the house specialties. People think New Orleans food is Cajun food when it's quite the opposite. It's very Creole based um, and, and it has a lot of Cajun influences in it because Creole is kind of a mixture of both but it's definitely heavily spiced, but it doesn't mean that it's spicy. The top seller is the Pick 2. And the Pick 2 allows you to get a quarter muffalata or a four inch po' boy and then pair it with gumbo, jambalaya, red beans and rice. Customers we spoke to loved it all. Well, it tastes delicious. It's well seasoned. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to eat here? Oh, see, you everything, but I would say the shrimp po' boy dressed is is what I really love and dress just means that's kind of no less talk for pickles, tomato, lettuce, and mayonnaise and it's, it's a simple combo but it's just yeah. I like to get the muffalata and the uh, jambalaya. And no matter what you order for lunch don't forget to save room for some amaretto bread pudding. It's sweet but not real sweet. LaSalle's flies in ingredients like bread and olive salad from New Orleans a few times a week to add to its authenticity. You'll also find New Orleans art and sound for the full experience. The music, the food, the atmosphere, the artwork, the people. I mean, it's just, just like being home. LaSalle's New Orleans Deli, serving up home cooking from the Big Easy in the heart of Tulsa. I'll eat it every day if I could. Because I miss being home, but I don't want to move back home, so it's like the closest thing to being in New Orleans. It is my favorite restaurant in town. In Tulsa, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. No matter where your next road trip takes you, we're going to help you find a great place to eat. Just log on to our website, TravelOK.com, and click on Dining. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. As our great state song says, you know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is grand. Forget a postal about it. I'm sorry, but it is a grand place. And we love Oklahoma. The pride of one Oklahoman and how he shares it with everyone who visits his shop. Open seven days a week, 365 days a year, Oklahoma's great state parks are stocked with summertime adventures. Suit up and cool off in a lake or river. Hike the trails, dig for treasures, tour the caverns, or settle in under the stars. Book your stay at a cozy state park cabin or lodge. Check in Sunday or Monday and get your fourth night absolutely free. Get all the details at TravelOK.com slash SPDeals and come see for yourself. Welcome back to Tulsa's beloved gift shop, Ida Red, where you can find Oki Pride on display everywhere. Tons of t-shirts. This one is my favorite. 
I think I like these too. I've never been to heaven, but I've been to Oklahoma. And of course, I've been to Canes too, <laughs> which is also very similar to heaven. And you mentioned Oklahoma Pride. Another place where you can find a lot of Oklahoma Pride is the Oklahoma City Stockyards. You know, it's the real deal. It's the biggest feeder, stalker, cattle market in the world. I love to go there. Come with me now. I'm going to take you along to a great little gift shop and watering hole called Stockyard Sarsaparilla. We'll start with the name. You say it's sarsaparilla, you know, like the drink the cowboy steps up to the bar to order in those old movies. And it was used kind of loosely to describe soda pop, maybe a root beer flavor, um, and even whiskeys. But so the term really means a drink, but in today's world, a sarsaparilla is a flavor of soda. Uh, tastes a lot like a root beer, only much creamier and much more delicious. The store name for that drink is new, but Joe Weens actually bought this location, the original National Saddlery, back in 2008. It started as a working saddle shop back in 1926, and we've just struggled with the desire to keep this building true to what it was and yet um, be responsive to the needs of our customers in the area. And so we now are a soda, candy, gift shop. We source made in Oklahoma products. We're very proud of that. Um, everything from homemade jams and jellies to made in Oklahoma beef jerky. Right here in our store, we added homemade fudge. So we make homemade fudge and hand out free samples of that every single day. Fudge flavors change with the season, according to store manager and fudge guru Taryn Jarvis. It depends on people's mood. Mood goes with weather, so um, with rainy days, that's why I have a lot of chocolate out. And whenever it's sunny, people like peanut butter and vanilla and stuff like that. Today, there is jalapeno chocolate, which is lovely with just a tiny kick of spice at the end. Joe Weens and her husband Terry, both Oklahoma City attorneys, have a long family history dating back to homestead days and a deep commitment to our Western history. So they decided their store needed a bar and it was going to be their real deal. They found one with its original mirrors and carefully trailered it back here to Oklahoma. It's authentic. It's Western. It's part of our heritage, our rich, rich Western heritage. It fits. It fits this city, it fits this area of town, it fits our culture, our historic lifestyle. The bar provides the perfect backdrop for customers who want to mosey up for one of the 14 brands of sarsaparilla, 100 different root beers, and 400 total varieties of soda. People love it. People want their picture taken in front of this old bar all the time. It's just amazing the, the stories that come out from people who who come from miles around just to, just to look at the bar. It's really cute, it's really quaint. And, um, and I think just like the beverages with the pure sugar, it's got that kind of vibe to it. It seems very natural, very much in the area. And so we came in and got souvenirs, all that kind of thing so we can take back to Virginia with us. For Joe and Terry Weens, their commitment to their businesses and all of Stockyard City is from the heart. As our great state song says, you know we belong to the land, and the land we belong to is grand. I get emotional about it. I'm sorry, but it is a grand place, and we love Oklahoma, and this is where our roots are and where we want to make everything better that we possibly can for those who follow behind us. Stockyard Sarsaparilla is open seven days a week. Check their website for specific hours. Up next on Discover Oklahoma, an open invitation to visit the southwestern part of our state. Come on down, we'll feed you something you like. See what they're cooking in Marlowe and why this restaurant is worth your drive when Discover Oklahoma continues. Whoa, every night, sit alone and talk and watch a hawk. Making lazy circles in the sky, we know we belong to the land. And when we belong to his hand, so when we say, yay! Yeah! Hey, yeah! We're, We're only saying, good and fine. Oklahoma! Oklahoma, come see for yourself. Welcome back. We've had so much fun prowling through all the oaky themed gifts here at Ida Red in Tulsa. I love this one. It's a, it's a golden driller tea towel. I like and, that. And I, you need these there bright blue oaky socks. Absolutely, I like those, yeah. but I also like these cool Oklahoma coasters. Remember the Camelot Hotel or Crystal's Pizza. How about that? Dang it, now I'm hungry again. Okay, well I got you fixed up. How All about right. exploring some good old 
old-fashioned Oklahoma barbecue. Lauren Ferrum has got us fixed up. She's taking us to 213 Barbecue in Marlow. Number 13, one, three. 213 Barbecue and Grill on Main Street in Marlow, Oklahoma is a fun family barbecue restaurant run by three lifelong friends, Bob, Tom, and Joe. Joe had this idea about opening up a barbecue place and a grill so we could have a variety of different foods. And here we are. We've been talking about doing this, and we worked at the church, we cooked at the church, and we cooked barbecue, and we knew how to cook barbecue. I got a loaded baked potato, a chopped brisket, a loaded baked potato, a chopped brisket, a catfish dinner, both beans, and okra. I got a chocolate pie that'll be coming. Okay. Bob, Tom, and Joe, along with their wives, opened 213 Barbecue and Grill in August of 2015 and serve barbecue and other great grill foods every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Barbecue, of course, is our specialty. We've got great chicken, uh, the pulled pork. We're also now stuffing a pork loin with smoked sausage and cooking that. So the barbecue is the is the main line. One, oh, your pie is ready. But the guys are also serving great burgers, salads, and other meals that are big favorites of their customers. Bob's beans is one of our specialties, a side. We do catfish now, and that seems to be pretty popular. We've got a green chili stew that we put together that's really good, I think. Regular customer D.B. Green says 213 is a regular stop for he and his wife. Well, they're, they're open three days a week, mm -hmm. and we make it at least two. I think the big thing is pulled pork. The new thing right now is catfish. But it isn't just the main dishes people come to 213 for. Their desserts are quite popular, too. Pies are amazing. So for a fun, friendly atmosphere and great Oklahoma barbecue, come to 213 Barbecue and Grill. Come on down. We'll feed you something you like. I don't know what it is, but something you'll like. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Number 14, one four. Discovering Oklahoma, I'm Lauren Farum. A heads up on this great restaurant. They are open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 to 8.42 p.m. Yes, that's an exact time, so you want to be there when they are open. Thanks so much to the folks here at Ida Red for hosting us this week. You're going to find them at 3336 Peoria Avenue here in Tulsa. They're open seven days a week, and you'll find exact hours on the store's website, IdaRedBoutique.com. And you can also check out their online shopping there, too. And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, we're headed inside one of the most important places in our great state, the National Weather Center in Norman. Find out how you can get in on a behind the scenes tour too. And if you feel the need for speed, but you don't really want to fly, we've got just the place where you can step into a flight simulator open to the public. That's next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma, including weird Oklahoma. <laughs> I didn't know they wrote it all down. The All My Stories. They did. <laughs> <laughs> Our intrepid Ford Explorer is provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.